Rona Kamath. Yes. Director and producer. Yes. Of today's film Bear B A R E. Co-producer, but yeah, kind of. <laughs> Tell us, this is which film of yours, Rona? How? What number? Ah, there are some that I don't want to talk about. So if I don't count those, there'll be around three. This is probably the fourth. Yeah. So fourth, but fiction-wise, I would say second fiction, like two documentaries and. Which are the two documentaries? Uh, Kazu was a short documentary, Kazu. and yes. then there was uh, the one I made on Bamona, which was um, called I Am Nothing. So I have not seen that. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like unreleased. Like we're still okay. kind of figuring out. That's the that's the one film that's been in the works for very long. Like almost, I would say, three, four, five, six. Six years now. I see. Yeah, so we have a lot of footage where we kind of spoke to him I and like see. you know stuff like that. But it became so long; it's like an hour and more. So we just didn't know how to package it. And I still sometimes go back to it, edit it, see what to do with it. It's been screened in Lisbon already. Wow! Uh, at the Museo de Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's a complex it's, subject. He's a complex person. Yeah, interesting, you know, interesting. And you kind of, kind of like end up overthinking it, and then it becomes like. You know something. That's the one film that's you know. Hopefully one day you can see it somehow. How would you describe today's film Bear? Ah, uh, so Bear basically started off in I think I would say I want to say 2017. 2017, there were these newspaper clippings I came through about a guy who was getting into women's apartments and he was watching them sleep. Um, so it apparently took a couple of weeks, months, something to catch him. But then he was caught and the whole thing was kind of strangely forgotten. Um, at that time, I didn't think like I would make a film on it or anything like that. But after a year or so, I think I might be getting the dates wrong. The Me Too movement happened, and <clears throat> when the Me Too movement happened, obviously it was like all these people coming out with harrowing experiences. But then I saw like people around me were saying things like, "Oh, why is she saying this now? Like, why? What does she want to gain? And like, you know, does she want the spotlight? Like, you know, stuff like that." And I was like, "Wait, what? You know, this is something that's really difficult. It's probably she has to." Really, probably prepare herself before she even comes out and says something like this. She or he, they were married. Yeah. Well. Uh, so I thought, why don't I put two and two together? That story of that man, and then put it together with the story of a woman who like narrates this incident, and nobody really believes, believes her. her. So I said, if I put these two together, maybe I'll I'll have a film. And you know, then I wrote it. The writing was pretty like you know, I'd love to say it was difficult or something, but it was not. It was pretty easy. In the day I wrote the script. Uh, and then it went pretty fast because my the person who presented it, uh, Arindam Mitra, is he actually produced Black Friday, Anurag Kashyap's film. So he kind of has a very strong idea about making films on subjects that are kind of you know like start a conversation, you know, something difficult. So he was on board very quickly, like, and that encouraged me. So he was like, okay, you know, you should do this. You really should make this movie. And then I said, okay, you know, if other people are saying, you know, like, because my the fiction film I made before that was called Scars, which was three years before. So for three years I did not write any fiction, and I kind of didn't want to, you know. So this kind of pushed me, and then I did it. Um, I wrote it, and then I think I wrote it in Feb 2020. 20. And I think we shot it. Bad time, yeah. Got caught late. Yeah, yeah. Right so we actually pandemic. got lucky because. <clears throat> We shot from I think the twelfth of March till like nineteenth or something. I see, just before. So lockdown. one day before the band happened, the first lockdown, yeah. or whatever that was called, that was the last day of shoot. And next day they locked down the the it country. So okay. I was like, okay, at least we finished shooting. But then the sad part is that we didn't get to edit it. We couldn't meet anybody. So I think around two months we were just sitting on the footage and thinking like, what are we going to do now? I think we started editing it around June, July or something. So there was a good three months gap when nothing happened. We were just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then once we started editing, I think uh, Sidesh Sidesh Naik edited it uh, with me. And Very well done, about, extremely well done. Yeah, I mean it was fun editing it because other than, unlike my other movies, this time I shot a lot. Like we shot obsessively. Yeah. So we, a lot. Like we had like thirty thirty five takes from different angles, wow. so we could really like keep moving and try different things. So editing that way is fun because. Editing. But hard work, no. It becomes hard work. Yeah, it can be tedious. But then the thing is, like you know, we came up with a very cool idea. So what we did was we we made a very long cut of the film, which was around thirty five, almost nearing thirty five, thirty six minutes. Okay. And then we started. I see. It down. I see. So we told the whole story, and then we started cutting it down. The idea was actually to make it under twenty minutes. I see. But that didn't happen. It became because then there are some scenes which are slow and kind of like, yeah. You know, So it became. It's still very minutes. charming and holds your holds your attention throughout. I hope so. Yeah, I mean I that think. was the that was the thing anyway because I was like you know we're taking so much trouble to make this film you know 
the idea is not to end it fast yeah. you know, like you do it in a way that you yeah. know people it feels like the idea is to make it feel like a feature which i hope happens so yeah what's it like working in bombay and doing films themed on goa uh, yeah so my writing work i do in bombay um but i think there's a big part of me that wants to tell goan stories and that's something that i don't want to stop because i feel like it's important for one it's important and also because like i feel like the generally speaking the film industry when they make stuff in goa there's a very very cliched it's very cliched and there's a lens through which you look at goa you know like oh it's this place where you can drink and chill and have fun and sure goa has that so yeah. that's fine but that's not the place i grew up when i grew up around i heard these insane stories you know from folklore to you know different things that i heard around me saying that oh this happened like two buildings apart and i was like wow you know stuff like that and nobody told those stories because people were not looking there because True. for them goa meant something True. and then they would keep showing it in the same way so that's something i'd like to do in my little way you know to tell goan stories and um, hopefully tell them in a slightly quirky way which which can be understood outside because see language and i always shoot in konkani you've seen my films like i don't make them speak hindi or marathi or anything like that i try to keep it to konkani the way you know people would like yeah. me and you would speak you know something like that there's a mixture of english as well it's like it's like uh, like how like let's say you know i'm talking to someone i just meet multilingual yeah, yeah multilingual how will you speak like you know i'll that's go from true. konkani i suddenly slide to english so that's the effort you know to try and keep it you know free flowing so yeah goa has a lot of stories and i have a lot more in the works as well trying to make but uh, let's see i mean your take on the goan uh, trust with filmmaking now is it improving vastly for the better slowly uh, for sure. yeah for sure it's improving the thing is like you know i always felt like when we made kazu for example it was 2015 and at that time when we made it it was like you know people asked me like you know is this a short film or is it a documentary and i was like it's a short documentary so like but then you if you can either make a short film or you can either make a documentary so people didn't really get the concept but then the way it kind of spiraled out like if you see even mirancha's film lovely film that was a lovely film oh thanks if you see mirancha's film also he did that in 2014 like it's so good and he did it in 2014 like you know that's so long ago. this is today's the other around yeah, so yeah. the thing is like you know i feel like there have been a lot of makers but now there are more platforms so people are kind of seeing things and i think in some way you know this whole ott thing also like netflix amazon all of that that has also helped people because people are now starting to watch more things with subtitles you know because before it was like you know oh how can you watch with subtitles and now people are realizing oh if i don't watch with subtitles i'll miss out on like a lot of good stuff so people are watching like you know squid games for example like i didn't imagine people would be watching in such huge numbers i have watched south korean stuff for 10 years but people are watching now so i think goa like it's it's good right now there's a lot of young filmmakers uh and i think the one thing there's there's a lot of representation amongst goan filmmakers which i think is not much there in our mainstream film industry even if you see this one festival itself you know so there's a lot of representation there's different kinds of films and i think people are bothered by different things so they make movies on that people in your team this film yeah. who's there who who would you like so yash savan shot the film yash savan made pull someone and he directed it uh so that was one of the first decisions when i thought like i would be able to make it because i wanted someone who i can trust to be able to shoot it because i wanted to shoot it you know in a very dark and sort of gloomy way to kind of creative hopefully try to make it thrilling it was very difficult to make a thriller like it's it's not and this is the first time i've done it so i'm hoping that that works but uh you need a team that you can really trust you know like because it shouldn't be like okay this is what you should do now it should be like okay this is how we should do it and then the person just automatically flows yeah they just get it and once they get it it just flows you know so yash was a very important part of it then i would say sidesh who edited it and also did the casting for me so he was important and then there's ashley who i've worked with for like 11 years now so we've done lots of different kinds of films together like documentaries and this and that and he kind of gets you know where i come from so he was very important and the actors also i think that was a huge confidence boost for me when i saw that there were so many actors around. i see like they've done a good job huh? no and doubt. they were so good like you know they, I, i didn't have to like they never got tired I or see. bored or like yeah, you know, they were just ready and game like I they see. wanted to do more and more and more so you know ketan who plays the man you know he has no no dialogues in the film at all the 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 man yeah the man you know so he does not have the guy any, who's intruding yeah 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 so he does not have any dialogues 
and it's such a difficult character because obviously he's literally okay. not wearing anything so it's yeah. you know you're exposing yourself uh, you're also going into these very difficult sort of awkward situations yeah. with the things that he's doing so he was game from day one you know there was never a complaint or never like okay maybe i can't do this nothing like that he was in fact more excited to explore it because he, he he's a real pure actor you know he wants to go there and there's no judgment or or anything like that so yeah all the actors you know they're pretty good and hopefully they keep getting more work you know outside also that's my goal. market market is the thing i want people see my goal i'll tell you frederick is when someone makes a film on goa I want, and I'm showing bear to a lot of people in the film industry I right see, now. I see. And I'm not showing it to like say, okay, see, this is what I did. I'm showing it mainly because whenever people are making films in Goa, I want them to look at our actors, because people come here you now and they get people from Bombay and Delhi who are speaking in Hindi, which is okay. I guess that's fine. But if you can get authentic actors from that place and they're good, you know, so why not? So that's my main goal. Like I want to push the actors out there and hope that more people appreciate their work because they are really good. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. All the very best. All the very Thanks. best. Thank you so much. As always.